John, are we adjusting the number of Taylor Swift is there? Because the Chiefs are nine four and one against the spread when oh. she is in the crowd. So that, Look out, man. big, big yeah. adjustment has I'll, to be made I'll if she shows up. <laughs> no. Everybody, welcome to Bear Bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BearBets, B A R B E T S. That's code BearBets. For new customers, get up to $250 in bonus bets. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. In New York, call 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY. That's 467 369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888 888- 789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. We had week one, Jeff. Now we have week two. And of course, everybody is reacting, overreacting, reassessing uh, what they did week one for the good, for the bad. And you always want to learn. You always want to yeah. learn from your, your mistakes. Uh, what mistake would you like to, uh, to make amends for week one? Um, I'll get to the obvious one in a second, but I would like Will Levis to not throw the ball randomly in the air <laughs> to the Bears defense. That would be something would. that would help me a lot. I'd win more wagers if I had less quarterbacks that just threw the ball randomly to to a defense. Uh, that was a bad loss. The one that that lost that was atrocious with my best bet was the Panthers. But Bear, that was over so fast. Right. It was a clean death. It was yep. done. It was over with. Um, I got to tell you what. Look, I live in Carolina. Um, I, I like the staff they put together. I think Canales can coach. Mm-hmm. I like the front office. I like the move they've, they've made. But if you're a Panthers fan and you want to see something different this season, <laughs> and you want to see a little glimmer of hope, right? The NFL does hope better than any other league. You got none of it. First no. play of the game interception. I even took, in the middle of the game, I took Bryce Young live, a live prop over 165 yards passing. Because they're going to be behind right. in the entire game. It was, it was near halftime. He had 50 yards passing at halftime. He didn't even get 116 yards in the second half. They threw the ball 30 times. <laughs> It just was a bad performance. So are you saying our Deontay Johnson props in trouble? It probably is, yeah. It's probably not great. Um, and then Derek Brown's injured. So the Panthers one I'd like to have back. Look, the Titans game, Bear, those are games you lose in the NFL. It's the NFL. And what's I never think this way about baseball or basketball or college football, but that last 30 minutes of that first window, so that 3.30 Eastern to 4 o'clock, mm-hmm. when there's eight games on, awesome. all I think about is how I'm going to lose every wager. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because that's exactly yep. what happens. The NFL games are within seven points very often, that last 30 minutes. And like I mentioned, Will Levis does something dumb. Or let's say I didn't have Buffalo, but let's say you had Buffalo and Arizona scores late. Or in the later window, you had Seattle and Denver scores yep. really late in that game, and you, and, 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 and you lose your oh, wager. You saw, you saw Denver coming a mile away. Oh, yeah. That was – Yes. That, that was – is if you could have bought stock in the and that game yes. landed on six, you knew you knew what was coming. And especially when you have a mobile quarterback like Bo Nix, they tend to cover those games. They move like Kyler Murray, right? You move around more, you make plays. Got pocket passers, I think, tend to have a, a tougher time doing that. So, uh, my my lesson week one is don't take the Panthers maybe the rest of the season. Except this week, though, they kind of look juicy. <laughs> <laughs> other, other, other than that, yes, <laughs> which we, we will get to. We'll talk. We'll talk about in the gambling group chat. But but you're right. I, my my. I usually do a better job with this. And the the bet that I want to have back is one that it should have won. The Raiders should have covered against the Chargers, but I violated a rule. I bet on Antonio Pierce against Jim Harbaugh. And sometimes in football, it's just as simple of a handicap as I am not going to bet on coach A versus coach B, or I am not going to bet against coach B ever. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh is a really good coach. Antonio Pierce, I think the jury is out whether he is a really good coach Bay, but at least the Raiders got the player's choice uh, as the head coach. To, but the, the game manager went really well last week. Uh, fourth and one from the 10, we're going to kick a field goal. Uh, fourth and one, uh, that, that's 43 in the fourth quarter. Uh, we're going to punt. Uh, yeah, that, that, it worked out well. 
I, I was I was so happy to see the Chargers go down the field and score two after that. Just just to completely, yeah. Ra- Ra- Raider Raiders are not a team uh, that I want any part of. Again, however, yet maybe this week against the Ravens they could be uh, kind of tempting. No, no no chance I take up against the Ravens this week, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to take the uh, the Ravens as well. But yeah, there, there was a um, I think it was a Bill Barnwell tweet out there this week about that fourth and one punt, um, like down down less than a touchdown at the opponent's 40 oh. something like it's happened like once in yeah. the last 20 I, years or something you ready for this so there's there's um have you have you followed the twitter account called surrender index yes yeah you're right cowardly punt index yes. las vegas decided to punt to los angeles chargers from the los angeles 43 and fourth and one with 7 15 remaining in the fourth while losing uh 16 to 10 with a surrender index of 131.72, this punt ranks at the 100th percentile of cowardly punts of the 2014 season. Of course, I mean, 2024 season, first week of the season, but the 99.9th percentile of all punts since 1999. So it's a very, ca- very cowardly punt. You, gotta, you, you have to be aggressive. And then the Raiders, of course, did the Raiders thing and started a fight at the end of the game, started you know, at the kneel down. They were pushing and shoving the Chargers offensive linemen because they're they're tougher. They tough when they but, lose. But, hey, Antonio Pierce said they got what they wanted out of the punt. They pinned up at the eight-yard line. God. When, when in doubt, the correct yeah. decision is always to be aggressive. Right, but you here's the thing about this. You have to think about These this, These coaches too. are so – and uh, Go ahead. our buddy – I think you know Todd Wishnev. Yes. Yeah. Todd is a very good handicapper, and Todd can put things in certain terminology, and which makes – and he said, and it makes perfect sense. We, we, we literally, it was about this decision. It was like, these are – people who should probably be managers at like Chili's or Applebee's and they're being given the keys to like billion dollar franchises. Yeah. So, so to, to me guys, when it's not really about like the decision of punk, go for it, whatever, but you, you have to think about if you're the, the, the coach too, is how quickly does it take the offense to get back to where you punted? which is part of the equation, right? So, like, mm-hmm. it took the Chargers six plays to get back to the 43. It, it was a Dobbins. It was a long Dobbins yep. run. So, like, what, you might as well just go for it. If you miss right. it, they're going to be back there anyways Correct. fairly soon and just make it happen. So, the Raiders, uh, very cowardly in week one. Uh, now they go on the road to Baltimore. We, we, we don't touch on that game much in gambling group chat. I think it's just because it's... I wonder if that's going to be a, a, a if the Ravens are going to be a popular survivor pick, uh, just because they're a big favorite at home against a terrible team, uh, awful loss, and in one of those early must-win situations, you don't want to start zero and two. Yeah. But I did hear, um, I think it was my buddy Cleve T A yesterday, who might have been on a numbers game with Gil Alexander, and they were talking survivor. And I haven't looked at it, so I don't know what the situation is. But I think Cleve mentioned something about you might want to reassess the Ravens this week because like there are a couple of weeks ahead where you probably are going to want the Ravens. So I would probably advise against playing the Ravens. I think he said week six, week nine. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Ravens were probably. Commanders prob- and Broncos, were, were, they host. Were probably like it's very slim week. So I wouldn't take the Ravens this week in Survivor. But just because, again, it's probably a typical overreaction. Uh, I would take the Jets. Uh, I, I know they got blown out in the second half, and they really couldn't. Oh, could But here's the thing. Just can't quit them. No. Okay. He, he, that, was, that was the game what we talked about all offseason. Like, this is why we said, like, if they were to win this game, they're going to go on a run, and maybe they could yeah. be the last team uh, to, to, to lose a game. Rodgers was fine. The offense was, I mean, it was okay. They just happened to face the either the best or the second best team in the NFL who had a freaking chip on their shoulder about all, all off season hearing about them. They're not going to be as good as they were last year. McCaffrey didn't play. And, and, and Jordan Mason yeah. had an unbelievable game. Like the Niners are still, oh, by the way, really, really good. I still think the Jets are good. Now they got to sure up some things on the defensive line and stop the run. But in terms of Rodgers playing and, yeah. and Brees Hall and Wilson, like I think they're fine. And, and, and Tennessee's terrible. I mean, you, you, we, we, we talk about a lot of quarterbacks in the league. We'll really, you're 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 going to war with Will Levis? Yeah, no, look, I I think the Jets, Jets are my survivor. I, I think the Jets, um, just just to win the game by itself, as we're talking about right now, um, Rogers looked like a quarterback 
coming back from an injury, mm -hmm. who's 40 years old, who hasn't played with anyone off. They, when he was taken out of the game, there were only four wide receivers that had targets. That was it. Right. Conklin had one. It was Brees Hall, Wilson, and who was the other? There would have been uh, one more top of my head. Um, um, Lazard. Lazard. That, that's it. And so now you get to game two. We talk about it all the time. Game one to game two is where you get a big improvement, especially when you have veteran teams as, as the Jets are. And then, look, their defensive line got sort of bludgeoned by, yes. by the Niners. The Titans' offensive line can't do that. No. So the Titans are not good. I think if you're just looking for outright right now, would I bet the Jets minus three and a half? Probably not. Story. But I think for Survivor, they're a good option this week. Because, because I think you want to stay away, as we saw last weekend, Bear, with the Bengals. Stay away from the, the obvious ones some weeks. Cowboys. Chargers, um, Chiefs. I don't know if you do Chiefs this weekend. But Eagles. The, 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 the Eagles, like sort of like the, the five and a half Texans. point favorite, the Texans, yeah. And, and, and go with the Jets here. What about you? Um, well, I had the Bengals on one of mine because you told me, remember, to take the Bengals. Um, yeah, right. So I need to re, I have to rebuy, I have to rebuy back in. Uh, luckily, mine is not as expensive as, as yours is. Um, so I kind of need like a, just a win this weekend, Bear. I need like an, a, a, a win by itself just to get back on track. So I think you have to go Baltimore if you're me. Like, you just need a win, right? If you're buying back okay. in, you just need a win. And I feel like a dummy for taking the Bengals. I switched it, too, from the Vikings to Bengals. That, that, I had Vikings. And yeah, went to I, I, I was going to roll and not use the Bengals at all, but I did wind up using the Bengals in one of them. And, I, and I'm mad because is everything else, the Vikings and, and the Bucks were both easy, easy winners. I know. I know. I made a mistake there. So I think I'm going to go. I just need a win. I want to win. To, to, to get back in the, on the good side of this, and I think I'll take Baltimore for that win. I don't think Baltimore's losing. I, I, I'm not even worried about the 2-0 and o thing. I just think the Raiders on the... The Raiders are not good. They, Gardner Mitchell's right, the quarterback. I've been over right. this. I have every Raider under possible. As, ba as, bad, as, as bad as Antonio Pierce's coaching yeah. decisions were, the Minshew turnover before the th the, the Jameis throw it yeah. backwards type fumble deal, that, that was... I, one other thing I did this week, Bear, before we get to game group chat, is I have New England Patriots as fewest wins. Mm -hmm. I also loaded up on Carolina and and the Giants, Giants in those, and I have all those now over three hundred. So plus, so I'll, hopefully, if, if one of them hits, I'll, I'm I'm square. Yeah. But I feel like those are the three teams right now that are just not going to win football. I, I I think you have to really look at uh, the, the the Giants and and the and the Panthers and just press them because I think to have the the fewest wins in the league I think they're both right around like plus three fifty. Well, well yeah, like. one was plus three fifty, one was plus nearly five hundred, and I have already have New England at plus three twenty. So those three, one of them like hits Carolina. Hits and at least Carolina, you look at the schedule; they have some winning winnable games coming up. Like, but however, like and this I don't is want to overreact it, to them. No, it's so, so and, bad, and that was and that's the thing, like. I have a nice ticket on the Giants at 10 to 1, which we talked about earlier like in July or whatever it was. But they have a game this week at Washington, and Washington's defense looked terrible. Like, I'm probably going to play my, my stake in that, in that Giants what last winless team. I'm gonna probably going to play the, the Giants this week because if they don't win this week, yeah. it, it gets really, really grim and like 0-8 oh, yeah. is a, is a real – Coach gone, all the, all the yeah. stuff. You think those – do you think they Dable gone, really? How do you – I mean, it's not totally his fault. No, it's not. Of, and they made the playoffs two years they just, ago. They're just so – Bad? They're just not a talent. They have no talent. See, the, the, the issue with, with the Giants – like, you need to just – the GM is the issue. The GM and, and who, who went war, I don't want to say, I don't want to say. Sure. But why are you paying Daniel Jones that money? I know. And, and I guess the case is for Brian Dable, you say, look, man, you know I can coach. We got him in the playoffs. You saw me coach in Buffalo. Just get me a quarterback. But the bear, the, the concern, though, if I'm long-term Giants, this draft class is not littered with quarterbacks that are great, at least not right now. Right, I mean, you have to hope that Quinn Ewers continues to get better. I He's, think Carson Beck could be pretty good. Carson Beck. So those are the two. I actually think Shadur Sanders is not half bad. I know people don't like him for other reasons, but I think he could actually be a, a good pro. I don't know if I draft him one overall, but you know, it's not it's not Caleb Williams and and Jane Daniels in this right. class or Chase Stroud, in my opinion. So the Giants have a, have a long road ahead. Well, Bear, let's get to game on group chat now. It's going to be me and you, Will Hill and John Murray. Let's talk some NFL. Yeah, the group chat is back NFL style. Myself and Jeff joined uh, once again happily by, by Will Hill and John Murray from the Superbook. Uh, I guess we'll just start it off right away 
Uh, tonight's game, Thursday night game, uh, Buffalo at Miami. Uh, Bills are a two and a half point dog. Uh, total 48 and a half. Uh, might are some 49s out there as well. Uh, Dolphins not really great offensively in, in, in week one. Bills obviously struggled at the start, came back and beat the Cardinals. John, it looks like that Bills defense could be uh, in for a, a problematic season. They had some holes there, it looks like. Oh, big time, man. I mean, I watched a lot of that game there because I had the Bills in a, it's called a local survivor contest that we that we both participate in. <laughs> and I felt like, uh, I felt like Josh Allen pretty much won that game by himself. I don't, I didn't really think he got any help from anybody on the Bills. He played great. They barely beat Arizona. They gave up a kickoff return for a touchdown. Their defense was awful. Even when they were salting the game away at the end, they go up by six and the guy kicks the kickoff out of bounds. <laughs> and it looked like Marvin Harrison Jr. was wide open for what could have been a winning touchdown, but Kyler Murray didn't see him. Probably because I don't know if Kyler Murray can see over the line, guys. <laughs> but no, uh, uh, Buffalo looked really bad in that game. Miami was lucky to win, too, yep. though. Miami probably should have lost yep. to Jacksonville. I know Jacksonville fumbled going in for a touchdown to keep Miami in the game. And then Tyreek Hill made a great play. So both these teams look very vulnerable in week one. Buffalo's got a lot of problems though. Yeah, I never like playing Tua against good teams. He just, I mean, you look at the numbers, he never seems to step up. But like you guys said, Buffalo, uh, linebacker, safety, there's just a lot of holes there. This is a tough spot, too, for Buffalo. And you think going to the the heat, the humidity of Miami on a short turnaround, only three or four days in between, uh, I'd be leaning towards Miami. I'd actually, I know Buffalo's a good teaser leg, and um, I do have some Buffalo teasers. I'm starting to get a little nervous just because it is a higher total. You're up around 50, so you can see like a 34-24 type of game where Miami, I just think Miami's going to score. So uh, I think my best bet in this game, uh, again, I'm afraid to take two against good teams and good defenses, although this Buffalo defense is probably not going to be as good as it's been in the past. Probably a Miami team total over, probably the way to go, because you figure they're going to get their points against the Buffalo defense that uh, that does have some holes here. And uh, my goodness, these Miami running backs are already beat up. I don't know if we have word about A-chain, but I think most starts out. It's like, man, you can't make it up. Anyone drafting or playing fantasy football knows these guys are always hurt. And you look up week one, they're already hurt. It, it's amazing. It's all like you know, th these Miami players, they're like sports cars. They're always in the shop. They're fast as hell. You just can't keep them you know, on the road here. Well, Will, have you gotten over your fantasy baseball loss yet? By the I know uh, Luis Castillo getting hurt was a big, a uh, big deal for you. You okay now? You, you over it? Not really, not really. A couple guys that could have benched, they didn't. It's just you put, you put so much time into it from uh, April till now to have something like that happen. It was, uh, it was tough, but uh, on onward and upward. Well, I had Christian McCaffrey for fantasy football this week, and that didn't go over. I, I lost by five five points. So that yeah, fantasy fantasy sports can uh, can get you. I think the Bills guys. I I didn't like how reliant they were on Josh Allen being their entire operation in week one. Like I, you want to save that ideally guys for week 17, 18 for like the super important games week one, Josh Allen having to do a lot for your team to win with his legs and, and making special plays is, is ideally not how you want to have week one go. And you're on the road. As you guys have mentioned, you guys are correct. The bills defense, not good, especially all the injuries when Milano is not playing the middle linebacker. They are a different team. So maybe look at even a Josh Allen rushing prop with 37 and a half right now, where again, we he he's going to have to make those plays to keep his offense on schedule. With you know, Coleman played well for his first game, but he's not an elite wide receiver. Like they don't have an elite wide receiver yet. Kincaid is good. I get that. And they didn't so, even target him much no, in that first only, game. I think it was only four catches. He had four catches. So I look at a Josh Allen rushing prop here, um, just knowing he has to do a lot. He is eleven and two, by the way, against the Dolphins in his career. So a little ownage there. I'm not sure that matters so much in in football as it does sometimes in baseball with some of those numbers, but 11 and two all time against the dolphins. Yeah. I, I know DraftKings has a lot of those touchdown bonus props, uh, uh, bonus bet props going out there right now. Maybe, maybe you look at a, a Josh Allen, anytime touchdown or a, a Dalton Kincaid, anytime touchdown being that Kincaid was like, so limited uh, in what maybe they readjust uh, here in week two and they, uh, and, and they get in the end zone. But uh, speaking of DraftKings, uh, our uh, DraftKings uh, super six game of the week is going to be uh, the two teams that were, I don't want to say maybe maybe they they were the two most impressive teams in week one. Obviously, San Francisco was impressive on Sunday night, but uh, the Saints absolutely annihilated uh, Carolina on, on Sunday afternoon. And then uh, later Sunday afternoon, Dallas went into Cleveland and, and absolutely routed the Browns. So so we got the Saints 
at the at the Cowboys uh, Sunday afternoon in Dallas. We're looking at a uh, Dallas six and forty seven. Uh, are people buying the Saints, or are they still a little baby buyer beware out there, John? Did I tell you guys that I had Carolina plus four and a half last week? So did I. I, 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 so, 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 did I so did I. So did I. So did I. <laughs> I didn't see much of that game. How did I do on that one? I didn't. I didn't really see too much of that. I, I think. I think they're buying New Orleans now. You know, we had this line. We had a look ahead line on this game as Dallas minus seven, and we did see some sharp people taking Saints plus seven. That was before week one, and then we were at six and a half on this game earlier in this week, and we had another respected player took six and a half, moved us down to six. So. There's definitely sharp money on New Orleans. Now the public is going to be on Dallas, obviously, right? Dallas. There's a lot of there's a lot of touchdownish favorites this week, yeah. which means there's going to be a lot of money line parlays this week. <laughs> Good luck. And with this game being 10 a.m. Pacific, one one o'clock Eastern, this game is going to kick off a lot of money line parlays, guys. That are going to include Baltimore. They're going to include Houston. They're going to include Philadelphia on Monday night. So this is going to be a really popular money line favorite option, teaser option. Although you should never tease a team. It's minus six and a half guys, just so you know that. <laughs> but uh, I think this will be a very popular play for the public. The, the Sharps are on New Orleans. Though. Do we do we think this is going to get down to uh, to five and a half maybe? If you, if, you, if, you, if you like Dallas, do you want to wait maybe? I think it's very possible. But there's going to be so much public support for Dallas. I mean, I know New Orleans are great against Carolina, but Dallas really, in a lot of ways, might have been the most impressive team in week one. If you consider who their opponent was, they were on the road and they just thumped Cleveland. I think I think last week I, I mentioned I like Dallas teasers. That's mm -hmm. what that's what you call just being overly creative. Why not just bet Dallas money line? Didn't need to tease anything in that game. That was a very easy win for the Cowboys. They looked great last week. Yeah, and I think we talked about on this show and other shows. Uh, Dallas was just dismissed all summer. People just handing Philly this division. Like, man, Dallas, I know they have their issues uh, in big spots. and They've had their issues in the postseason, and they haven't gotten over the hump. But that's three years in a row they won 12 games. And just because, you know, we don't like the running backs or whatever, now all of a sudden, you know, this isn't a good team. I thought that was overstated. Um, that being said, I, I don't have much on this game. I would lean towards the dog. Uh, I know Aaron Schatz, the, uh, the the creator of Football Outsiders and DVOA, he talked all summer about two teams that he thought were way better than the market thought. That was the Saints and the Patriots. So good start for uh yep. for, you know for his projections here. We'll see if that keeps up. But he he just he made a strong case for the Saints that hey, this is just like an averageish team. Which in a league where the, a, a lot of bad teams, a lot of bad play, average is pretty good or average is is good relative to some of these other teams. So it'd be a lean towards the dog. But uh, keep in mind, Dallas does have a habit of beating up on these teams that are not as good as them. Remember last year, they were sort of like Miami where uh, if they play a team better than them, they win and they win comfortably and the point spread really didn't come into effect. And if they played somebody that was better than them, they, you know, they didn't really step up and, and and win the game. So keep that in mind. It'd be a lean towards the dog, but nothing else. Yeah, Jeff, I think I'm going to hang around and maybe wait and see if I can get a five and a half and then I'll, then I'll, then I'll hop around Dallas. Uh, I'll tell you one part of this uh, game that I think favors the Cowboys. And it's why I'm leaning to a couple directions in this game. Um, their defensive line, I think, is going to have a field day with the Saints offensive line, who who did not play well in the preseason and then played a Panthers team last weekend that doesn't have a pass rush. And now they and go... lost Derek Brown in the middle of yes, the defensive line. Yes, and lost Derek Brown. So now you go to Dallas, you're on the road, and you have a pass rush that... And the thing about pass rush, guys, it always shows up, right? Especially at home, on the turf, with the noise. Like, you might think that the offense starts slow or something else doesn't play well. The pass rush is going to show up. So, kind of two ways I'm leaning here. Like, a Saints team total under 20 and a half. Or even a Derek Carr. Right now, the number, I think, is 218 and a half. He only threw for 200 yards last weekend. Like, you know, he played a great, efficient game, but wasn't a lot of yards. So, I'm looking in, in that direction as far as how to play. I think the Saints offense could struggle in this situation, getting a little overconfident playing a bad Panthers defense. What do, what do you make of that, Jeff, by the way? I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that. Like, we saw, what, two quarterbacks, I think, or maybe two was the only one that threw for 300 yards. So many quarterbacks, you know, 148 yards, 170. So many of these quarterbacks did, they didn't even reach 200 yards passing. Is that just a factor of, like, week one, and they didn't play much in the preseason? Would you expect? It, uh, are, are, are these, like, have you, I don't know if you've looked, are, the, are these yeah, numbers, it, like, super low this week? Is it a time when maybe you're getting these quarterbacks at a good buy low opportunity in terms of their pass prop. 
it's mostly every quarterback that did not play in the preseason that had those, that had other those than numbers. Patrick, other than Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Mahomes, who, who played in the preseason, yeah, of course. Yeah, and he had nearly 300 yards mm-hmm. passing on Thursday night. Um, it's, it's a couple of things, guys, right? It's situation, right? Like, the Cowboys are on the road. They were dominating that game. They didn't need Dak Prescott to throw the ball a lot. Derek Carr, they're dominating that game at home. They didn't need him to throw the ball a lot. Justin Herbert had 144 yards. That was it. But they ran the ball well. They protected the ball. He doesn't have those weapons. So I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think in week two, we'll see some of these passing offenses open up. But specifically in this game, I think Carr could struggle with the protection in front of him, which would lead to less points and less passing yards for him. Good game. Speaking of passing yards, we probably should see a bunch of passing yards in this one. Uh, Lions and Bucks rematch of a NFC playoff game from a year ago. Looks like we're pretty much consensus now. Uh, seven and a half across the board. A total of 51, 51 and a half out there. Uh, this, this total has seen uh, massive movement uh, up, up three points from the opener. Uh, it feels like it's a higher scoring game. Uh, Will, I'm just going to start with you here because you had an interesting uh, idea earlier in the week about an offensive player of the year bet. Yeah, Jamison Williams. Now, the numbers come down. At one book, it's 250 to 1. Another book, it's 120 to 1. But uh, I just think he's going to be in the spotlight. He had a monster game in week one. He started to come on last year. Remember, he had two touchdowns in the NFC title game against the 49ers. That's just one where, you know what, you're taking a stab at the number. A lot of people have free bets or bonus bets or whatever. Um, he, he's a guy who. He's had a weird trajectory, a weird career, because when you look back in college, one of his seasons was COVID year. Then in in the championship game, the next year he gets hurt, which wiped out his rookie year in the NFL. Then he had the gambling suspension. So we really haven't seen him. But the one like full year in college he had, which is really the last time we've seen him for a full year, almost 1,600 yards receiving, 15 touchdowns. I think it was on Ryan Rosillo's podcast where he made a good point. He put it very simply. He's like, man, if you watch this guy on Saturday, it's just very hard to imagine he's not really good in the NFL. So he's going to be on a Detroit team that's going to score a lot of points, have a lot of weapons. I think you know, getting him at a long number and just putting it in your pocket and seeing what happens I don't think is a bad play. Uh, I, I would lean towards Detroit in the game. I think maybe the Detroit team total overs here is, uh, is a good one because uh, Baker and uh, and Goff are probably going to trade points, but I just think Goff has more weapons. And Goff really uh, threw the ball well, did well against Tampa last year. They swept. Remember, they beat him in the regular season in Tampa. Then they won in the divisional round. So uh, I'm sure, John, that the Lions are going to be in those money line parlays that people love so much. Um, I don't know that those are a great idea, but uh, I'm sure those are going to be one where people add, oh, just throw the Lions in there. They'll win. Well, they loved it. They loved a money line parlay, all the favorites. And I did miss the Lions when I was running through those teams. Forgot about them. We we opened this game, Detroit, six and a half, 20. And we're now we're up to minus seven and a half, which I think seems a little bit high, guys. You know, the, the divisional playoff game you mentioned last January was more like five and a half, six. And that was a pretty close game. Detroit obviously won that game. I think they won by eight. So they did cover the spread. But th- I think this number looks a little high. Really, really sharp money to the over in this game. And we've seen our total go from 48 and a half, <clears throat> excuse me, to 51 and a half. Tampa Bay's offense looked great last week. I understand they were playing Washington and Washington stinks, but still, I mean, their, their offense looked really good. Baker Mayfield looked great. Detroit's going to move the football up and down the field. So maybe look at the over in what looks to be one of the better games of the week, I think. This feels like backdoor coverage, right? Plus seven and a half here for, for Tampa Bay. Late in the game, gets a late touchdown, gets a Lions defense that I think is still a little bit leaky. Remember, the Lions pounded the Rams, but that's because the Rams' offensive line, guys, was was injured and beat up. Bucks have a good offensive line. They, they protected Mayfield well in, in game one. This feels like a game where if you have a Lions ticket, you're, you're sitting there with two minutes left hoping Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay doesn't come down and score a touchdown, so just like we saw last weekend with some of these late covers. Yeah, I, I think kind of like what Will was Will was saying before about the the high the, the the Bills and the Dolphins high scoring. Worried about that teaser leg. It just feels like it's a very high uh, variance game. But 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 I do agree with John. I think uh, even though we've seen a number in the total move up to fifty one now, fifty one and a half. If I had to play anything in this game, I, I would still consider over because this does feel like a like a thirty four twenty four ish uh, type game as well. Uh, no, the two teams uh, again that were uh, were losers on Sunday and really were losers in games that they very easily could have won. Uh, the Rams at the Cardinals, uh, 
both, both offenses look like they will be good, even though now the Rams now will be down Puka Nakua for a little while and uh, a very beat up offensive line. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're seeing the Cardinals one in 48 and a half. John, I, I kind of like the Cardinals here because I, I, as bad as the Cardinals defense is, uh, the fact that the Rams are so beat up on the offensive line, uh, you're down Nakua, and sure, I respect the hell out of uh, McVay and Stafford and, and Cup and Kyron Williams. Uh, I, I was kind of impressed with the way that the Cardinals were able to remove the ball, and you would expect, like like you kind of alluded to before, you, you would think that Marvin Harrison might be a little bit more of a focal point of this offense now. I think there's a really tough spot for the Rams, Bear. You know, they really – they really threw the kitchen sink at Detroit on Sunday night. They almost stole that game on the road against a Lions team that I think we all agree is one of the best teams in the league. You mentioned all the guys they have hurt. Now they have to go on the road at Arizona, an Arizona team that almost won in Buffalo probably do win that game. If it wasn't for Josh Allen playing MVP level football, I think it's a really tough spot for the for the Rams here. We did see a very respected play come in on Arizona at Pickham, moved us to minus one. So I think the Cardinals look like a pretty good option in the afternoon on Sunday here against the Rams. A tough spot for the Rams with all those injuries after an emotional game. Yeah, this the spot is tough with, with, with all the injuries and the fact that hey, this is a game. Detroit beat us in the playoffs last year. We're going back to the same building. First game, let's let's you know avenge the loss. And you're up three with the ball with a couple minutes to go, and you end up losing the game in overtime. And they have to turn around with all these injuries and win on the road at a, a place where it's going to be very hot in, in you know in Arizona. Uh, I just I don't know though. McVeigh has done really really well against Arizona. Granted, a lot of those are against Kingsbury, and those are different players and different coaches. <laughs> It'd be a lean towards Arizona. It's not enough for me to actually. Get, you know, get to the window and bet Arizona though, but that that's the way I'd go. Arizona's defense, guys, is just not going to be good this season. And and even though the Rams have offensive line issues, right? They're they're down Avila, as, as Bear mentioned, plus two other guys nope, did, did, right? did not exactly. practice yesterday, but they're supposed to play the right tackle. And I think the center <laughs> or right or right guard, like they, they have a lot of problems. Don't get me wrong. But I think Arizona's defense can't take advantage of it, and and that's where I, I kind of I kind of net on this game. I don't I don't have a play on it because I, I just think that the Cardinals' defense, as much as I like watching their offense play and they're successful, I don't know if their defense can do much to take advantage of the Rams' offensive line. I'll tell you what, guys, the Cardinals to me are like the most fun Sunday ticket watch because of because Kyler Murray. Like in every game they are in, they're going to be fun because Kyler Murray just makes plays at the end of the games that make them a competitive football team. Like, yeah. like their team each Sunday, that witching hour, that last 15 mm-hmm. minutes that I want to have on my TV because Kyler Murray is going to do some crazy stuff to keep him in games. Yeah, I actually bet Kyler Murray the other day at 20 to one is comeback player of the year because I mean, I know he did play a little bit last year, but I, I think if he, if he's able to maintain the level uh, that, that we've seen late last year and early this year for an entire season. Uh, obviously, Rodgers is considered yeah. a favor for that. But uh, Joe Burrow, I think we may have some concerns with how poor uh, he looked on on Sunday. But uh, yeah, I, t- I took a, took a shot on Kyler Murray, a comeback player of the year at 20. But, but I mentioned but I mentioned Mur- I mentioned uh, Burrow rather. Yeah. Bengals at the Chiefs. Uh, it felt like it was going to be a great game, and the, the Bengals torpedoed uh, probably about 45% of everybody's uh, suicide pools and eliminator pools uh, on Sunday, losing to the Patriots. Uh, we told you to be careful with, with the Bengals, how they have had a tendency to lose these opener game, opening week games. Uh, and now they, uh, they go to Kansas City. The Chiefs are 5 and 47 and a half. Uh, kind of no man's land, huh, John, with this number? Did you tell me to be careful with the Bengals? Because I lost a survivor play on the Bengals. Did you? Did no, you I, I, th- I think that I think that was a different segment. You didn't when, say it to me either. Uh, don't worry. Oh, we know it. Great. Yeah, thanks I a lot. I said it thanks to you. For telling me no, now. It was no, our survivor segment no, we, in the pod. No, I lost thousands of dollars, Bear. Thank you. No, you didn't. <laughs> I had the Bengals two years ago when they lost to Pittsburgh. I had. Well. The, yeah, I, I lost. It, I lost. Game, I lost an entry with the Bengals the, as well. A, at least in that game, they turned the ball over five times. You can like give them a little bit of a yeah. break. This one, they just got their butts kicked. Yes, they did, and that's more concerning. Well, and they, they they missed a very short field goal in that game, and they missed an extra point in that game two years ago. They, the loss you know, this past Sunday, the turnovers is what killed the Bengals. The they that's very untimely turnovers why they lost to New England. But the real question about this game and the Bengals whole season is Joe Burrow's health. Is Joe Burrow okay or not? He didn't look good on Sunday. We opened this game four and a half. It got bet up. 
Sharp guys came back in on the Bengals a little bit at plus six. A lot of sharp money on over 46 and a half. But, uh, you know, well, I think this might be the most, maybe the second most public side of the week. Baltimore will probably be the most public side, but the public is all over Kansas City at our shop. And that game's in the afternoon. So a lot of the parlays are going to run to Kansas City and then connect into <laughs> Sunday night and Monday night football. We're going to need the Bengals really big on Sunday afternoon. I hope Burrow's okay because we're going to need him. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I would think people would be on Cincinnati just because there are a lot of trends where, hey, people have seen Burrow beat Mahomes and play well against Kansas City. Burrow's been great. He's a dog for his career. I don't know, though. He's, he's playing with the wrist. He's flexing the wrist in between uh, plays uh, on Sunday. I don't know if you guys saw that. That's concerning. And they just, been, since he got gashed uh, on the ground, I mean, it was just a simple offense from New England where just hand the ball to Ramondre Stevenson and, and get four or five yards at a clip. If you can't stop the run against Kansas City and you got to bring your safeties up and that leaves the worthies in the world of the world to you know go deep and uh, Andy Reid's got extra time to repair and he's going to see that uh, inability to stop the run. Uh, I, I would lean towards Kansas City. I, I don't, I, man, I, I don't want to lay points against Burrow, but Burrow, who's maybe not 100% healthy, might not have Higgins. Uh, Boyd's not on the team. It's just not the same Bengals team, bang, same Bengals offense, and they're not as good defensively. So uh, I think Kansas City rolls here. And uh, boy, if Cincinnati's 0 and 2, it, it's, uh, it, look, with the 17th game, with the seventh playoff spot, it's not a death sentence like 0 and 2 used to be with the 16 game schedule and only six teams getting in. But 0 and 2 is still a hole that, uh, that that's pretty tough to climb out of. John, are we adjusting the number of Taylor Swift is there? Because the Chiefs are nine four and one against the spread Whoa. when she's in the crowd. So that, oh, big, big yeah. adjustment has I'll, to be made. I'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, isn't it just assume that she'll go? I don't. Uh, I, I, I I don't know. Does she go to every game? I, I think so? she does. Um, nonetheless, uh, look, I, I think this is a tough spot for the Bengals. Besides the Burrow injury and sort of the team, like Andy Reid's teams with extra rest do very well. Right, the, the the Chiefs play Thursday night. We saw the pictures of the players getting a weekend off, which is what happens when you play Thursday night. They're rested, they're relaxed, they get to play the Bengals. And guys, this is not a game where the Chiefs take the Bengals lightly, right? This is the one team over this sort of Super Bowl run that, that the Chiefs have been on that have given them trouble, right? Three point win, three point loss, close games all the time, and and they the Bengals defense for whatever reason has played this Chiefs team well each and every year. So you're gonna get the Chiefs full focus preparing for this game. The Bengals, as we mentioned, the, the Burrow wrist stuff, like like Will's right. Burrow said that he was trying to keep it warm on the sideline. I don't know, you're in the middle of a game. If, if the wrist is not warm, I, I, I have a concern about that, right? So I think things are trending poor on the Bengals side. But I will say though. As a Chiefs fan and someone who's watched every game since since 2013, they, they don't cover the number quite as often as we think when they're a three-point favorite or more with Mahomes. They just do things that keep the games close. So I have I have no, nothing on this game right now, but I do think the Bengals will have a hard time just winning the game outright. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on on this right now as well. I don't, I don't want to be involved in kind of like a number that's kind of in no man's land. It looks like the very fav, uh, public. Favored side here that lo looks like the Chiefs should win, but it would be just like uh, typical Bengals to to come out here and play well after laying an absolute egg, and, it, and that, that's what the NFL is. You play you play like crap one week, you lose, look terrible. Uh, next week, you you, you you're massively line the line is massively gone the other way against you, and you and you wind up winning. And one of those teams are the Carolina Panthers, who we all alluded to earlier before. Uh, we were on them last week in New Orleans getting four and a half, and that game was over probably two drives into the game. Uh, John, we, we, want, we, want to add the, we want to add the Chargers to those money line parlays as well. Uh, like who, who out there is, is going to walk up to uh, the window with, 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 with you and Jay behind it and be like, yeah, I want, I, 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 want the, I, want, I want the Panthers this week. Give me the Panthers plus a six. I think the, the Chargers are going to be the most popular survivor play because people are going to say, you know, here's my chance to use the Chargers. <clears throat> Maybe I should just ride against the Panthers, ride go against the Panthers every week until they finally win a game. Yeah, the Chargers are going to be in a ton of money line parlays. I don't really like that, that side, the Chargers side, to be honest. I think uh, no, a lot Antonio of Pierce really – Antonio Pierce blew the oh, game last week against the, against the Chargers. Yeah. He, you didn't he like that punt? Really... <laughs> well, I mean, everyone's talking about the punt, Will, and they should. Field goal. <laughs> they should be, but he also kicked a field goal when it was 16-7 yeah, to seven on fourth and one at the 10-yard line. 
<laughs> so yeah, the, the punt was the highlight. I, I agree, but he had several really bad decisions there. I, I don't know the, the chargers. I, I know Carolina looks so bad on Sunday, but that line seems pretty high for the chargers to be going on the road. They don't exactly have an explosive no. offense. They're not trying to have an explosive offense. No. That doesn't seem to be yeah. the game plan that Jim Harbaugh and, and the team has implemented. They're going to run the ball. They've got those two cornerstone offensive tackles. They're not trying to light you up. No, and, and that's the way I'm going to probably, after after suffering through that game on Sunday and losing with the Raiders in a game that we should have won, uh, it's pretty apparent that the Chargers offense is not going to be uh, Air Coriel here <laughs> at all. I, I think if you're looking at Charger team totals all year long, uh, that's probably going to be a very profitable angle. I, I saw the team total was 23 and a half, but like, even against a bad team like Carolina, you, yeah. you would expect, even though they lost Derek Brown and how poorly they played on D, you would think, Jeff, yeah. that, that they'll have a, at least a better defensive showing. That maybe not win the game, but I'll, I'll not allow 40 points. So after the Chargers won, Jim Har they released a, a video of Jim Harbaugh talking to the <clears> team. <throat> and he said, guys, that you will make the, the, the biggest jump of the season between week one and week two. And that applies for all teams, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the positive Carolina spin is obviously it can't go any worse, but that Bryce Young didn't play very much in the preseason. Last week felt like a preseason game for the offense. In the game two, they're going to be better. But my problem with that, guys, is you wanted to see something from Bryce Young that was different than last season. Baron, you saw none of that in game one. None of it. I'm not sure against this Chargers defense, you're going to see much better. And on, and on the flip side, the Panthers' defensive line is not good. They lost their best player. And to John's point and to Will's point, the Chargers are going to try to bludgeon you to death. They're going to run the ball mm -hmm. 40 times in this game. So I know the under is a little bit low, but to me, this is an under game. It's supposed to be a little bit wet and rainy and, and windy in Charlotte as that sort of hurricane kind of makes its way through the Carolinas a little bit. So I, I lean under in this game, low scoring game. The Chargers just take the ball. They have it for, for 35 minutes and run the ball 45 times, bear and go home with a win. Uh, 20, 20, 23, 17. How, how, well, that's, that's, we, that's over. It's over. I don't, I don't, I don't think we get, I mean, I, I could see this game, you know, 17, 13. Like it's not, Perfect. It's just, the, the, but you understand the intention of the chargers is not to win games by a lot of, like they, they just, that's not what they are built to do. And I think that the Carolina Panthers aren't built to score right now. And it'd be a low scoring game. Jeff, any, uh, you are Jeff. Uh, Will, any, any picks, thoughts on chargers, Carolina? I blacked out when I heard you say Chargers and money line parlays. I just can't. <laughs> I, you can't put the Chargers in money line parlays. You just can't do it. Um, I, if anything, I would take the points. And John said, "Hey, who wants to come up to the window and bet the Panthers?" Somebody's betting them because it was six and a half. It's down to six. Yeah. I thought he'd go, go the other way and maybe get a seven. I mean, if we were doing the show last week, the line for this game, the look ahead line, I think was one and a half, two. Now we're up to six. I think this is why I think this is why I'd actually take Carolina just because I think it's an overreaction. And you know what? If you if it's thirty one nothing Chargers, you get what you asked for. But Still it right. would be a lean towards the Panthers. I, if I get a seven, I might actually bet the Panthers. But what wouldn't be a big bet? It would just basically be on you know the fact that uh, th this is an overreaction based on what the line was a week ago here. And you want to sit around and watch uh, watch Red Zone and tune in before you get to like the Cardinals portion of the red zone, the final 15 minutes. You just want to kill some time with the, uh, with the chargers and the Panthers. Speaking of, I don't say overreaction, but you look uh, not really an overreaction, but a total flip from the, the look ahead in the on the opening line, the Packers. Now we don't know Jordan loves injury status. We can assume that he's not going to play, but they seriously can't be expecting to play Malik Willis on Sunday. Can they Jeff? Uh, they don't have a choice because that's who's on their roster right now. I'm not a fan of, obviously, I think we, we know this by now, of like, you know, taking the, the, the worst number of the line and whatnot, but how do you not take the Colts in this spot? Even though they're on the road, Malik Willis is not, Malik Willis, by he's, the way. He's literally the he, worst quarterback he, in the NFL. But he also, since but he also the didn't even get to Green Bay till the end of August. Yeah. So he's not been in this offense. He has not played with these guys. And the Packers, think about how deflated they must feel offensively, right? They 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 go and lose a game in Brazil when they played well, but had yep. a bunch of, you know, but but their uh, you know the the turnovers and whatnot, and then they lose their quarterback, and now you have to have Malik Willis come in. Now you're at home, I get that. Colts off a tough loss, but they covered. I, I'm not saying I, I feel comfortable back in the Colts minus three here, Will, but I don't think you can take the Packers. You, you just can't bet on Malik Willis to cover this game in a new offense. He's not used to. He's not a good football player. He didn't have a good pre. Like all these things, are, they're not going to score points in this game. 
Yeah, I actually thought this would be Tannehill. I'm surprised he's not signed. Maybe uh, that that's still in the works because he's got a relationship, I think, with Lafleur. He probably can come in, know that offense, and be, you know, one eye closed and better than Willis. And not, not to pick on Willis, but like Bear said, he's been awful the limited times we've seen him. But one time we saw him was against Kansas City, and they basically just ran like a I don't know a wildcat, a service academy type of offense, or just run the ball, you know, bleed the clock and. and try to play good defense and try to hang in the game that way. I would look towards an under and I would expect we see just a lot of Malik Willis running the ball and, you know, you just run it, you run it, you run it, and then you throw it and it's a surprise and, and try to catch, uh, you know, Indy off guard that way. I guess that's how you play it, but I, I would look towards the under. I don't think we're going to see Malik Willis really put the ball in the air too much here. John, is there, are there any thoughts out there? Any of you, any of your uh, moles kind of saying, <laughs> Hey, don't be surprised. Like, if we do see Jordan Love out there on Sunday, because like Jeff said, like the fact that Ryan Tannehill wasn't signed and brought in this week uh, is almost like, I don't want to say it's a tell, but it's almost like the Packers may be holding out hope that Love could play. He's shaking his I head. I can't no give up my that. moles, Bear. I can't, <laughs> I can't give up my moles. I don't, look, I haven't, I haven't heard anything like that. You know, I haven't heard any whispers about Love playing. I think these are the hardest games to set a number four and the hardest games to bet. Like what, what are you going to get from Malik Willis in this game? Is he going to be just dreadfully bad? Are they just going to keep the ball on the ground and play it safe? They probably will. There's a high variance quarterback on the other side of this game. Right. Anthony Richardson has shown the ability to make incredible plays like that touchdown pass he had on Sunday. I don't know if there's any other player in the league that could make that throw. He also has the ability to, to screw up some plays I think this is a stay away game in my opinion, fellas. I mean, there's just too much, too much variance at both teams at the quarterback position. And really it's a tough number to set when you have a, when you have a situation like this, we have a franchise quarterback, he goes out so many question marks about the backup quarterback. You just kind of set a number out there and let the betters guide you to the right closing line. And so far there's just not much action on this game. Nobody knows what to do. Yeah. With this Colts Packers game, I have no idea what to do, Bear. I, I, I don't. I'm, gonna, even, I'm going either. somewhere else, man. Yeah. I'm going somewhere I, else. You, there were there were what, 13, 14 other games on on Sunday that to bet that this is probably not going to be one of the ones that I get involved in. Another one that I'm like, I don't want to get involved in because I would kind of lean the way the line has moved right now. Uh, San Francisco off the the big win Monday night against the Jets, five and a half, uh, 45 and a half at Minnesota, who uh, look really good on Sunday. Again, the opponent were the New York Giants, so take it for a grain of salt. But, but Sam Donald looked composed and confident. Uh, the defense looked great. Now you're getting the Niners on the road on a short week, and you're not going to have McCaffrey again. Uh, we, we've seen a, a good bit of Vikings money here, it looks like, John. Oh, big time. Big time. Really, really sharp play on Minnesota <laughs> plus six. Came in earlier in the week. A tough spot for the Niners. You know, that was a statement game for them on Monday night. That number, you know, that number got all the way down to 49ers minus three, minus 20 after the McCaffrey injury or after McCaffrey was ruled out, even though apparently the Niners knew about that for several days, but whatever, no hard feelings there. <laughs> but uh, I think the Niners had a statement game on Monday. They, they crushed the Jets. Now they have to go on the road on a short week at Minnesota, a team that really did look good on Sunday. I know it was against the Giants, but they did look good. Sharp guys are on the Vikings at plus six. And I understand why, because I do think this is a tough spot for San Francisco. Yeah, I would only look towards Minnesota, too. Uh, if you remember last year on a Monday night game, uh, middle of the season, uh, Flores and the Vikings did a good job on Purdy. They won the game. They moved the ball on the other side. And the Vikings, we talked about it all summer. The Vikings have a good roster. It's just... Can you get not even good play out of Sam Darnold? Can you get him to be like an average player? Because Jefferson, Addison, eventually they get Hawkinson back. A really good offensive line, two good tackles. Aaron Jones, who's an underrated player at running back. Uh, I don't know how good the defense is. I think they've got some good players in the front seven. I think they scheme things up well. Van Ginkle's a good player. Uh, they've got some holes in the secondary. But uh, as far as rosters, if you just took away quarterback, that, that's one of the better rosters, non-quarterback included. And uh, again, San Francisco, 1 o'clock Eastern after playing a game that ended, what, 11 o'clock midnight on the West Coast or on the East Coast um, you know, a few days ago. Uh, it, it, I like Minnesota here. I think it's too many points. You mentioned Flores in that defense. There, there are these. I didn't know there was such an award out there as like the assistant coach of the year. Like, and I, I found that out there. Like, 
Brian Flores was 39 to one to be the name, name of the assistant coach of the one. year. Like I, I saw that I, I went back and looked. So I was going to maybe put it in the column, talk about it here. It's still 30 to one, but, but Jeff, like that, that's a good defense. And like, if they're, if they are in the playoff race, it's going to be because of that defense. Yes, but <laughs> here's I, the but. He, who, he hates my one, bet. Who who was one? I, I guess I have to look up the award. Of, I didn't know this was an award. That I didn't either. Re- religiously, this feels like an offensive coordinator award. I mean, how good the Vikings defense has to be to win for him to win this award? I mean, they have to be a playoff team and have a top five defense, probably. I I, I don't know like what how he'd get this award over like an offensive coordinator that gets a rookie quarterback or someone to play well. The thing that the thing that I question about Minnesota's defense overall is they don't have that game wrecker pass rusher anymore. So they might be able to rush the ball, I mean, to, to rush the passer well against the Giants, let's say. That's what they're hoping Dallas Turner but, can be. Yeah, eventually, right? But they don't have, he's not there yet. No. So that's my concern about the Vikings defense, is if you don't have that premier pass rusher, how good can you be over 17 games? I think in this specific game, to the, the, we're talking about the moment itself, right? Niners on the road, Vikings off a good win, Vikings at home. Like I think the, the, it's Minnesota or pass here, but blind force for coach of the year. I, I Did you make that wager? I did. So yeah. you moved the number from 39 to, to 30. Maybe. Um, <laughs> You're gonna, yeah. You're not gonna win that. I'm sorry, Bear. It's okay. Yeah. Free, 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 free bonus bet. It's, it's all. I need to wager more money to get the bonus bets like you do. It's okay. It's, I, I feel jealous. I'm jealous about those. I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess the. Uh, well, I'm looking. I'm just looking down the board here. Another. Uh, can, p- what? Can I ask John my question about buying points? Yes. Okay, John. I have a question for you. As, as someone who sets lines and, and yeah. knows the business. So the Broncos were yeah, three and a half against the Saints, uh, right? Uh, against the uh, the Steelers to open up. It went to three, mm-hmm. and now it's two and a half. What is the what is the value if there's any in buying back up to three at minus 120, 125, 130? Do, do you do you suggest that? Is uh, that or do you just tease the Broncos? Is that better? Like how would you play that situation? I would not. I would not do plus three minus one thirty, Jeff. I think it's look. The NFL is hard enough to win at minus one ten. You start you start getting into these games where you're buying teams up. You're doing minus 130, minus 135, some other numbers I see people buy up to. I, I'm not a fan of doing that. I think if that's what you want to do, I, I think your best bet uh, long-term in that situation, if you like the Broncos, is probably just to play Broncos plus two and a half. In my mind, I think that's your best play. But if you if you feel like that's not enough points, I would just go with a teaser depending on what your shop charges you for six point NFL teasers. Cause if you go up to plus eight and a half, that's game. That game's got a really low total. Oh yeah. That looks like the best teaser play on the board. Let me amend that with one statement though. I don't think you should be buying points in the NFL unless you're playing at the Westgate Superbook, <laughs> in which case it's a great <laughs> idea and you should do it. You should tease <laughs> college football games. You should do all that stuff. So Otherwise, I would say don't do it. Just play Denver plus the two and a half. Denver is a really sharp side this week yeah. against Pittsburgh. Uh, coming off of, I mean, Denver Denver struggled last week, but that was a tough spot for Bo Nix, guys. I mean, yeah. first game he has to go at Seattle. I, I don't want to. I don't want to criticize him too much. Pretty tough spot to start your your rookie season there. Yeah. Well, I, I I mean I have the three, but I think I have to give out. I think right. the, the, it, it, it's, it's two and a half talking, now. So talking yeah, I was curious what the because people might look at that and say that they want to buy up to to, to another number. So uh, the Sunday night game, Chicago Houston. Uh, you mentioned it before. It's Houston's going to be. You're going to be sitting there with your Caleb Williams jerseys on at the end of the night, John. Right. Me, of course I will. How did Caleb look on Sunday? I didn't see much of the game. I, I just I saw that the Bears won, so he must have played great, right? Uh, yes, he did. He did, uh, yeah. Fantastic. Because oh, yeah. Caleb Williams is one and zero. This is a tough. This would be a tough game, a tough scene if you're a Carolina Panthers fan. You know, you you somehow came out of this last two drafts without C.J. Stroud or Caleb Williams. That'd be tough to watch this game Sunday night. Houston minus six and a half. Here's what here's the betting on this game. It's going to be money line parlays and teasers to Houston. We're we're definitely going to need the Bears pretty big, I think, on Sunday. I, I think because of the spot where it is, it, where it falls in the calendar being the Sunday night game. I think this might end up being our biggest need of the weekend. Oh. Chicago, Chicago's offense looked dreadful against Tennessee. They had no business winning this game. Now now they got to go on the road at a Houston team. Looks very good. Everyone's going to be on Houston. I'll be on Caleb Williams, though, boys. Attaboy. Will. 
you know, as John's talking about these money line parlays with the Cowboys, with the Lions, with the Texans, uh, you know, with the Ravens, I'm curious what you guys think. Who's the one team that wrecks it? Because like, I'm not going to put in these money line parlays, but do we think like, does this ultimately get home or, or which team are you most concerned about, uh, you know, wrecking this thing? Who would you say again? Will? you said you oh, we, we have the Lions versus the Bucks. Yep. We have the Cowboys over the Saints, Texans over the Bears. Ravens over the Raiders. There's probably one other one. Oh, Eagles over the Falcons, which is the Monday. The one. If you want to wrap around That's that the one. one. That's the one Monday yeah. night. Really? You think so? Wow. That I, Eagles defense. Well, the Chargers too, Will. The Chargers, oh, the Chargers too, yeah. The Chargers will be, they'll be involved in there for sure. So I think the, I think you hit on all the other teams. Though. I that, think, that the, I think the Chargers, the Chargers and the Eagles would be the two that I'm most worried about. Yeah. And, and, and I, might, I might violate my own rule here in, in a little bit and talk about that game on Monday night, but that, 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 that Eagles defense was not, was not good uh, in, in that game in Brazil. They, they probably like, we, we were talking about it in, in the group text the night of that game, like uh, until Jordan love got hurt, like you probably came away feeling a little bit better about the Packers than the Eagles, yeah. even though the Packers wound up losing mm-hmm. the game and then love gets hurt. And who knows what, what's going to be the status there. But yeah, the, the off season concerns about, about hurts and and the defense, I, I still think there's a little bit a uh, little bit left to uh, discuss there. But uh, nothing really left to discuss here with you guys, uh, John. We appreciate your uh, your your insight as always. Uh, Will we appreciate you? And uh, we'll back and do it again next week. All right, Bear. We're back talking about the National Football League Week Two. We'll talk about the Falcons in a few minutes because I know you're. I can't believe you're doing this. Just a <laughs> teaser here. I, I know we don't disagree with you, but we'll we'll talk about this game. But first, we'll do my my fade of the week, Bear. I'm fading the Carolina Panthers defense, which was not great last season, even though they have some some good coaches. Now they lose their best defensive lineman, Bear. And I want to look at the, sort of the defensive line right now and linebackers. Not great. They're back home. They're playing the Chargers. And what do we know about Jim Harbaugh's teams? They want to run the football. So I'm going to take J.K. Dobbins over 50 and a half rushing yards here. The Chargers are going to come in this game feeling confident with their offensive line, design a game plan about running the football, protecting Herbert. Also, too, the weather could be a factor in this game. It's supposed to be a little windy and rainy in, in Charlotte. So give me Dobbins over 50 and a half rushing yards, fading the Carolina Panthers rushing defense as we head into week two. And I, I can see that as well. We, we saw that that is not going to be a very explosive chargers offense uh th- this season so yeah i i can get with you boy i really want to i really want to be uh like i want to take the, the panthers this week i just don't know if i can well i mean the, the the truth is to win these contests you sort of have to hold your nose mm-hmm. a lot and take these wagers bear so sometimes you just have to that might be it's not a great there's not five obvious ones for the contest so you might just have to do it no it really, it really isn't. So I, um, I'm gonna have to dig deep because they're really, really outside of uh, uh, the Chargers team total under, and the one game here which I am designating as my best bet, presented by DraftKings. Yes, uh, are the only two things that I currently have written down officially in my NFL picks column. So it is time for our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, I'm just going to go first. I'm taking the Falcons plus a six and a half. I alluded to it at the end of the uh, the gambling group chat. I know Kirk Cousins does not look. We talk about Aaron Rodgers off the top. It looked like looked like a 40 year old quarterback coming off of an injury, but at least he was fine. Kirk Cousins, like he had him lined up in shotgun, like he did not look fine, and that concerns me. <laughs> However. I think maybe you talk week one, week two, maybe he gets the, the game starts coming a little bit more naturally to him again. You're able to get some of the offensive weapons involved against an Eagles defense, which struggled mightily. Uh, they turned the ball over, what, uh, three times. They allowed over yeah. seven yards of play. I think it is an opportunity for the Falcons offense to to score some points. And six and a half is a, is a, is a lot of points in what potentially could be a high-scoring game. So I thought over 47 might be okay as well. But I, uh, I I think the Falcons plus the points is a uh, a good look this week. So this is not a shot at how at at, at you and your yes, it is. and your and your physique here. But I think you move better than Cousins right now. Thank you. Like Cousins, just it, it it wasn't that the offense didn't feature a lot of things like play action pass or move the pocket. It's that he just didn't move there. He did not move. And I certainly can believe that week two we see the improvement as he feels more comfortable in the pocket. But if he's not moving, it makes him an easy target. 
And that also makes the offense tougher to run. Their outside zone running scheme, you sort of need to hold the backside player with the quarterback being able to bootleg and move the pocket a little bit. If they can't do that, they, you know, they, they can't run the ball either. But I think your point is valid about the Eagles, though. The Eagles, just something about the way they play is a little bit fishy right now. It's a lot of points. It's a lot of points yeah. um, for the Falcons, excuse me, for the Eagles to, to cover in this game. Good, good luck, buddy, betting on the Falcons. <laughs> I wish you the I wish you the best. You won your best bet. I did not, so I'm no fool right now. Let's get to, to my best bet here. We talked a little bit about this number. I'm taking the Broncos plus two and a half. We talked to John Murray about this earlier. It was at three. I still like it at two and a half because I think they win this game outright bare. But I'm not, again, I'm admitting I'm not getting the best of the number yep. here, but I still like them at two and a half here. Steelers are back on the road after winning week one with six field goals. Six field goals. Justin Fields, I believe, is rolling back as a starter this weekend. Russell Wilson, I don't think it's going to play. So it's 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 it's, it's what they talk about. I don't think they're going to score points in this game again on the road in Denver against a Denver defense that we know is good, right? Like, they're going to throw the ball. Sertan's going to shut down Pickens. Like, mm -hmm. that's the end of the passing game. If you're one-dimensional, you're not going to score on the road. And I think we look at Bo Nix and what they did offensively against Seattle. Yes, his air yard attempts were, were, were short. I get that. There were some errant throws. But I thought overall, Bear, he looked like he belonged. He looked like he sort of belonged to the NFL. They're going to figure out an offense. And it's a low-scoring game. Give me the Broncos here. Lastly, lastly, Mike Tomlin as a underdog is a great wager. Is a road favorite is an absolute terrible wager. They never cover these games, especially since he's had a basically new quarterback since you know since since it's been retired. Give me the Broncos plus two and a half here, Bear. Yeah, no, I, I like that as well. And, and I'm glad John brought that up as well because that's we talked about this a lot. How it sounds counterintuitive. Like you see two and a half, you want to lay two and a half because it's less than a field goal. Oftentimes, taking the two and a half yes. is is the correct way to go. I think I think you're on the right side again. We we were joking around on Sunday about like look at the Steelers drive. They had like a a, a ten play twenty yard <laughs> field goal drive. Like this is not an offense that no. is uh, that's built to do anything. I actually feel talking about the the results like with the Packers and the, and the Eagles like feeling better about the Packers and we would the Eagles like. I still feel really good about my Steelers win total oh, under so do I. and Steelers like low scoring. Like, yes. like there was nothing about that game that made me believe like our read of the Steelers was, was incorrect. No, even, even so the four teams that I have the most like unders on giants, Raiders, uh, Patriots and Steelers, even the Patriots are winning, but the Patriots are who they are. The Bengals just didn't play right. well. Like, mm -hmm. It's not like the Patriots overwhelmed them physically and, and was able to, you know, score a bunch of points. I mean, they just, Bengals didn't play well, which they never do in week one. And you mentioned the Steelers. They're not going to win many games with six field goals. And even the passing plays they had were, like, ran, it wasn't in the flow of an offense. It just was, like, Pickens, go get the ball at the end of the first half, catch a pass. Like, it's not in the rhythm of the offense. So, I think they go to Denver and struggle this weekend. I think the Broncos get a win. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see that as well because I, I do have a little bit of a, I do have a little yeah, but, Chiefs Broncos first, second. Yeah, but but your wife's a Steelers fan. It would be a rough She Sunday. is. Um, they lose, No. Yeah, no, she, it'll, 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 it'll be rough. But you see, she, had, she wasn't even around early, most of the day on Sunday because she went and I, uh, had a pet rescue drive that she had, okay. had pet transport. So she was happy to see that they won. And I mean, I made the, I made the joke that you'll be the, uh, I was joking that, yeah, after tomorrow, we'll, be the, we'll both have 1-0 starts. <laughs> and she kind of quipped, and she's like, no, you won't. And sure enough, the Jets did not win. <laughs> but hopefully we, uh, hopefully we got a lot of winners this week. Appreciate everybody again. Uh, watching and downloading, rating, review, subscribing, uh, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify. Check out that Bear Bets YouTube channel as well. And again, as always, if there's one thing you need to take away from here, Jeff, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.